I don't know if I trust these car dealing skills. Let's bring them out. Let's bring them all out. Bring them all out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Preaching and teaching the gospel. We settled down in a shitty town, only broken home in a Bible game. How do we know each other, guys? We're first cousins. Uh, yeah. How do we know each other? We're, we're all first cousins, but we grew up like brothers, um, really. It's how we grew up, running around in the wild and acting crazy. Um, yeah. The truth of it is we really came together over something that, you know, was kind of a tragedy, really. Yeah. 2005, my brother died in a car accident. He passed in June, and it just hit me, goodbye June, and then the rest was history, you know. They, they both, it just worked. My, my dad, he, he really pushed for me to sing. He's a singer. My sister sang. My mom sang, like, every, you know, everybody sings. I am uh, grateful for my dad for, for pushing me. Um, he was always really tough on me, especially when you're a kid, you think it's tough, but it's, you know. Uh, but the, the best memory I have is like being like seven or eight years old and him making me like try to match like these Whitney Houston like melodies and like, you know, she could well, obviously. And I'm, and like, he's like, no, you could do it. You could do it. And um, yeah, I remember like feeling accomplished. He would push me to a point where I would feel like, you know, it wasn't about making him happy. It was more about like realizing what I could do as a person. And I think that's what he knew the ultimate goal was too. And so I, I put a lot of, uh, a lot of my inspiration to my dad for sure. Yeah. Family's super important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, family is, you know, the whole reason we started this band. A big part of my upbringing and all, all of our upbringings uh, was, was church music. And uh, my grandfather, Brandon's grandfather as well, uh, was a traveling evangelist, sang. Um, my, my mom, my grandfather, his dad, they all played piano. Uh, even our, our grandmother, she played piano. It's just all through our family. And, and mostly uh, it is all from church. And it was pretty much put in front of you at the very beginning, like you're gonna play and sing something. You know? My grandfather, he was just one of the <clears throat> best men you'd ever meet. Um, he passed away a few years ago. Um, but he was definitely one of those guys that, like, you could tell that he cared as soon as you met him. And he definitely passed down the, like, the love of music to our, really, our entire family. But for them, it was more than just music, though. It was, uh, they were saving souls, you know? So it, um, it puts a lot of weight in, into that, you know? Not only the love of music, but the love of people, you know? And I think that's one of the things that we have definitely have held on to, is we want our music not just to be music, it, it needs to mean something. And I really feel like that we learned a lot of that through my grandfather, for sure. I've got that old time religion in my soul. I've got it, I've got it, you can have it, you can have it.
have it if you want it. If you want it, you can get it. You can get it. You can get that old time religion in your soul. Oh yes, I've got I've whatever got it takes to do whatever it takes. Finish the sentence. <laughs> Uh, we haven't been drinking. See where the night goes. Catchphrase. It's good, it's gold. Yeah, we lived, I mean, we lived out in the country. We grew up in a modular home or like a trailer or whatever you want to call it, out in the country. We had a creek. We had a creek that we spent a lot of time in, me and my brother. Have like crawl dads, like make little forts, some of our GI Joes and stuff. That's my, some of my favorite memories. I love this kind of stuff. I love being on the river. So it seems like I write a lot of my coolest riffs when I go home and I stay with my parents because they have a beautiful home out in the middle of nowhere. And I just catch myself connecting with something out there. So I wrote this riff. So I was connecting with something, I don't know, I guess nature. And but there was something about that that simple melody that was speaking to me. And that led me, that led out all of us. I showed the guys and we started writing Step Aside. And that was one of the first things that, that um, led to all the other songs on the, on the album of, of See Where the Night Goes. So that was a special moment. And I always seem to write one or two of the important riffs when I go home to visit my family. So I don't know if that's just connecting with nature out there or if it's just being home and comfortable and safe, but there's something to be said about it. So the way that we transitioned into our first major deal was this studio right here. That was kind of the bridge piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we met Paul Moak in 2013, and we came in this studio, and that first day we wrote a song called Daisy, which is on Magic Valley. But that kind of set the tone and the vibe of getting to that point, because Paul was a huge part of that process. I think that's where we learned to, to, to do a record. Mm -hmm. Right. And Paul taught us how to create a record, which is different then just learn how to write a song. That's me and you. This was a one taker. This was all the demo. That we kept. My favorite solo of Tyler's, yeah. I think, ever. It's like a Jack White wild man. Yeah. Well, that's what Paul always calls me, wild man. This is the best solo on the record. COVID hit. It was going to be a big year where everything kind of come together with our headlining shows and uh, also supporting, you know, big acts. And when COVID hit, it just wiped everything clean and everybody was scared to death and no one knew what the world was going to look like when we emerged from this. I remember when we got the news that everything had canceled. We had nothing uh, for the whole year. 
yeah, everybody was scared and shut down. And so we decided to set up a rehearsal space and uh, just a space in my garage. And dude, it was like flashing back to being 15 again. Yeah, it was awesome. And we, we <laughs> come- We're getting loud. Yeah. yeah, we come back fun. and uh, a lot of like, I don't know, probably three, three four days a week, we were <clears> getting in there record uh, recording basic demos and writing and trying to put together a record and we had been le leveled back down to really our roots and foundation of us three getting together with instruments and writing songs in a garage You know, our juices are just flowing creatively, lyrically, everything's just kind of happening, and it's this beautiful, beautiful experience, and that was the early stages of this record, See Where the Night Goes, it, because we, I think we all knew in the back of our heads, like, we want to show this to Paul. This is for, like, documentary footage. I think the definition of love is if I bought a new motorcycle yesterday and I'm choosing to be in here with you guys instead of riding it. He's not riding it. He's writing it. <laughs> that three piece that we discovered in the garage again because of COVID translated into See Where the Night Goes and it created a, a really powerful record. Whole thing. You know, we, we've always dreamed of making a record like a lot of our heroes made, and this record is in the production style like that, like just simple guitar left, guitar right, and you hear it and you feel it when you listen to it. I think at first, you know, it was a little, maybe a little scared of that in a way, because we'd never done that before, but it was just like, it was just magic when we did it. You called those diamonds, diamonds, bro. That's right. That's right, diamonds. <clears throat> called those diamonds, man. So, Kevin, you've been with us nine years. Mm-hmm. And we just cut a new record. Yep. And you played on it. Sure did. It, it's a cool album. Like I, like I said, I listened to it, and I've we did it a few months back, and I'm listening to it every couple of days, like yeah. all the way through. Being on the road for so long together, and, you know, we, we've kind of established a core unit live now. Right. It feels really I, good. And it feels really good, and I think yeah. that's going to continue to grow and blossom into the studio. And, and Absolutely. I thought the recording yeah. process was incredible, using the tape, and simple, right. effective. It's not rocket science. It's like if you have a good part, a good vocal, good drum beat, what else do you need? You know, and I think that's the beautiful thing about this record. I mean, we've always tried to, you know, make some big masterpiece I feel like this album like we really just put it broke it down to its bare minimum you know and yeah I think that's where the beauty is you know simplicity and just knowing where you know where we come from and like right. being kids growing up together you have all those memories and stuff so yeah. it's like breaking up is not really an option there's a respect of that we know where we all come from and the hardships that we've all faced, how long the road's been and where we've been at and we've done it all together. Every door that we've come across in your career, it's like we know we're not walking through it alone. Like at the end of the day, I got, I got two amigos here that are gonna face the dark or the light with me either way. So it, it makes it, uh, I think it makes it easier. No matter what, it makes everything easier to be family and be grounded like that. The future is just back on the road, really. Yeah. You know, to be on the road, that's that's where we thrive, that's where we that's where we live, that's where we come alive.
like some Billy Gibbons stuff. Yeah. Oh, major. Majorly Billy Gibbons. Sexy. Key change. We'll do this till we die. That's where our parents, our grandparents did it, and I just don't really see an end in sight.